Hello everybody. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome new friend. My name is Cherie and I am the owner and creator at The Freckled Cottage. I love to thrift, flip, and make discarded items wanted again. Sometimes I place them into my booth and sometimes I keep them for my own decor. In today's video, I'm going to give you a couple thrift to French country style treasures. Both of these items are garage cell finds and I transform them using some DIY clay based paint and wax products as well as the Dainty Flourishes mold from IOD. Are you as excited as I am? I know this butterfly is pretty, but let's get started on today's projects. Project number one is this cute little wooden plaque that I thought needed some good updating so I paid the dollar for it and brought it home. First I got started by taking off the little $1 price tag and then used a wet wipe to clean it up and get all the grunge and sticky off of it. The hanging bar was a little loose on one side so I decided to remove the entire thing and reattach. It actually came off pretty easily, then I used some wood glue to reattach it. Once that was dry, I got out the Gorilla wood filler and I filled the little hanging holes. In hindsight, I will tell you that I wish I had not done this, actually. I wish I had just left the little holes there and figured out a way to hang it with the holes instead of what I ended up doing. Next, I used the Dixie Belle Boss Primer because I wanted to make sure that none of the stain or any of the wood tannins would bleed through my paint, and I put two coats of this boss on. The center art window was plastic, so I decided to get out Dixie Belle's Slick Stick, and I put two coats of that on that part. Once all of that was dry, I got out the Dainty Flourishes mold from IOD to embellish this piece. Make sure that when you're going to use paper clay in your molds that you first dust the mold so it will release, and I suggest using cornstarch. And also be sure to knock the excess cornstarch dust off or it will end up on your mold. The air dry clay that I use is the DAS air dry clay that I get from Amazon. I've not actually used any other paper clay products yet, but I feel like I enjoy using this, so I'll go ahead and recommend it. So I take a chunk of clay that looks to be about enough and gently roll it into a rope with my hands, and then just press the rope of clay into the mold. I then use IOD's micro rim to easily remove the excess with my fingers. Before I remove the clay from the mold, to get a nice clean impression, I use the pointy end of a paintbrush just to clean up around the edges. Sometimes I even get out an old Cricut weeding tool to clean up the extreme details. Then I just flip it upside down and gently roll the mold off of the clay impression. And then I repeated that process with the matching alternate image of that mold. Once I had my molds arranged on the plaque the way I wanted, it was time to securely attach the molds to the piece, so I got out a little tiny artist brush and squeezed out a little tight bond quick and thick onto a paper dish. I very gently lifted up each end of the mold and using the little artist brush loaded up with glue, I brushed it onto the back sides of the mold. I let that dry for a bit and then got out Dixie Belle's French linen and got started putting a coat of paint on the entire piece.
It was a little challenging getting into all of the little details with the larger brush, so I decided to get out another little tiny artist brush and use that to get into all the little nooks and crannies of the molds. For the center section where the art was, I got out the DIY color Tarnished Pearl and proceeded to put three coats of it on in the middle oval portion. Once that was all dry, I decided to go through the IOD traditional pots transfer book and I selected this transfer. It was late at night when I did this and I probably should have waited till the next day. I wasn't going to record it because I was too tired and then I thought I should probably just go ahead and record it so I handheld the recording, which is why it's at a different angle and maybe a little bit shaky and so I do apologize for that. So the next day I got out the DIY wax in clear and used my small wax brush to put on a layer of wax on the entire piece. I used a soft cloth to wipe off some of the excess clear wax and then I got out the DIY white wax and proceeded to add that to the entire piece as well. I really like how this softened and lightened up the color. I then used the soft cloth to wipe that back as well, leaving just the white wax in all of the edges and nooks and crannies to give it that aged effect. Once I had that looking just the way I wanted, I got out the Kills Dark Wax and started adding a little bit in all of the nooks and crannies to add a hint of grunge and character.
And once I had it looking the way I wanted with all that agent patina on the piece, I now needed to contend with how to hang it since I had filled the hanging holes. The problem with this piece is that I didn't have any screws small enough that would not poke right through the piece. So as it was, sawtooth hangers were out. My next thought was to staple on some sort of hanger. But after some research, I realized that my staple gun didn't hold staples that would be shallow enough to not go through the entire piece as well. I really didn't want the hanging mechanism to be really sloppy, and so I didn't want to just glue um, some ribbon on there, and I really didn't feel like I had any ribbon that would go well with this piece anyways. So what I decided to do was use something to thicken the overall depth of the piece. I found a piece of thick cardboard. I actually think this was the backing that I took off of a photo frame at some point or another. So I just cut it to about the right size and then I used the tight bond quick and thick to attach it to the back and centered it as best I could. I used a couple clamps to make sure it didn't slide around and had good adhesion. Once that was dry, I then attached the sawtooth hangers because at that point I was confident that the screws wouldn't go all the way through and poke through to the front. As you might have noticed from the previous clip, I put glue on the wrong side of the cardboard, so this piece of cardboard was a little rough. I decided to put a layer of Big Top on it. And then what I did but didn't record was add a layer of paint on the cardboard as well so that it would blend in on the back of the piece. So project number two is this boy and girl set of really cute ornate frames with art behind convex glass. They are plastic, but they have a good little weight to them. I picked them up because I was excited to update them and enhance all that lovely detail. At first, I wanted to take maybe the middle part out while I worked on the frames. So I worked at that for a few minutes and then I realized that if I kept trying to take those little wire holders out that I would probably just end up breaking them and not be able to get them back in. So I decided to just leave them. So the first thing I did was get out the DIY paint in the color crinoline and got to work putting a nice even coat of paint on both of the frames. And for this, I used my new Klingon brush. I got a couple Klingon brushes for my birthday and this is my first time using this one. This is the Pointy Sister 12. It works a lot like the DIY Perfectionist brush and I will say that it works really nice for getting into all those little nooks and crannies, but it's not as soft as the DIY Perfectionist brush. So I'm sure it will have its place, though it's a little bit more stiff. I gave both frames the exact same treatment. Once the paint was dry, I got out the wet wipes and I gave both of these a good distressing as I wanted a good bit of the original gold to come through that crinoline paint. With both frames painted with a coat of crinoline and distressed, I got out the DIY big top to put a nice clear coat over the entire thing. I wanted to make sure that when I put the next color layer on that it would distress only down to the previous layer as I had made it. So for the next layer, I used DIY's apothecary and applied it to both frames.
and then you guessed it. Once it was dry, I got out the wet wipes and put a nice distress on the apothecary layer in much the same manner as the crinoline layer, except a little bit more, as I wanted both the gold and the crinoline layer to peek through. When both frames were dry, I got out the DIY wax and clear and put a nice coat of wax on both frames as well. Next up are the decorative waxes. First comes the DIY white wax. I then got out the soft cloth again and proceeded to wipe back the white wax until it had the nice patinaed look that I was after. Much like the previous project, I wanted to grunge it up a little bit. So I got out the Kills Dark Wax again and proceeded to work that into some nooks and crannies where I wanted some dirt and grunge that would normally accumulate on old pieces, like I wanted this to appear to be. And here you can see the difference between the one that has been waxed decoratively and the one that hasn't been done yet. I did proceed to go ahead and do both exactly the same and you can see that done here. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked today's video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. And if you have like-minded friends, be sure to share it out. Check out previous content and also subscribe and comment to support my new channel. Oh, and turn notifications on to ensure you're notified every time a new video is uploaded. Find time to create, friends, and see you next time.